This is the MacBook Pro with the Apple M1 Pro chip. I've been using it for several months now and today I want to discuss what's on my MacBook, my favorite apps and tools and share some tips and tricks that I always apply when purchasing a new Mac. So first up, let's begin with settings. There are some things that I always configure as soon as I buy a new Mac that in my opinion are pretty crucial. Starting from desktop and dock, I slightly reduce the size of the dock to have as much space as possible. I have completely disabled the magnification of the dock on mouse scroll because I prefer to keep it static. I find it a bit faster to open applications by directly clicking the icon I'm interested in this way. With the latest Apple update, they introduced widgets that sync directly with your iPhone and for this reason I use them here on my Mac with this set. Things. On the lock screen I have set a message when locked, taking inspiration from how Moleskin does it in their agendas. I have included my contact information in case of MacBook loss, hoping for the goodwill of people. I don't think actually anyone would return it, but you never know and it doesn't cost anything, so why not? If you have an Apple Watch, a crucial setting in Touch ID and Password is to activate an option that allows you to use the Apple Watch as a quick unlock or password entry method. It will save you a lot of time, so I highly recommend activating it. Another game-changing feature in Trackpad is enabling three finger selection and four finger full screen application scrolling. One of the reasons I never fully appreciated the trackpad was certainly the way you had to drag or select items. With these settings, I completely changed its use. For active corners, I've set only the one in the top right that quickly opens the notification center. Since I'm already in that position, it's convenient for me to open it by literally moving the cursor to that point without having to click other keys. Finally, if you often use the MacBook connected to the power, I strongly recommend activating optimized charging in the battery settings. macOS will automatically understand how to optimize the battery based on your daily usage. Moving to storage, I have one terabyte version, which I use for all applications and files I need at the moment for a project or a work, for example. Once I am done using those files on the Mac, I move everything that is important and I want to keep to an external memory. Among the best, there are certainly the Samsung T7, although now the next model has also been released, so consider if you can spend a bit more for higher transfer speed. Next up, on my desktop, I recently borrowed this design idea from my friend Brian, a software engineer and content creator, so be sure to check out his channel. I placed my most used iPhone widgets in the center, just to have some basic information always at a glance. For the rest, I usually try to keep my desktop as clean as possible, because I organize everything in downloads folder, because I try to hide the possible mess. I also enjoy changing the wallpaper frequently, because it affects my mood. If you like this one and want to directly support my work, you can grab one of my wallpaper packs. So thank you very much if you consider it. Next up, something really important, especially on macOS, is the menu bar. Here I gather all my favorite extensions to enhance or add some features that are missing on Mac. As a former Windows user, the first thing I had to immediately modify on Mac is the general window management. Rectangle is a free application yes, I said free, and that's quite rare on Mac, that allows advanced window management even directly from the keyboard. You can customize keyboard shortcuts as you prefer, or use the default ones, which in my opinion are already quite intuitive, so I haven't changed them. One thing I use a lot, for example, is maximizing windows almost entirely, because I like using semi-open applications to always keep an eye on the desktop and the various icons. Then Amphetamine is the perfect tool if you plan to use your MacBook closed with a monitor. I don't know for how much time I looked for an application like this, but I have finally found it. I don't know why, but Apple actually doesn't allow you to completely close your MacBook while it's plugged into an external monitor. If you try to do it, the MacBook will go into standby mode 
and of course you won't be able to use it. Thanks to Amphetamine, before closing the laptop you can choose to activate an endless session in which the Mac will not go into standby mode. This is the only way I have found to use the Mac with my monitor. If someone has another solution, please drop a comment below. Then I have installed Dev Colors. This is actually just a color picker I use for graphic works. It's pretty simple and it simply does its job. I synchronize Google Drive in order to always have my files in the Finder sidebar without always going through the main website. And finally, there's Copy Clip, which lets you have a clipboard with the latest things you copied always accessible in the menu bar. There are other powerful and better design tools such as as paste for example but this is completely free and it's perfect for my use. Before diving into my favorite software if you enjoy the content and my work you might want to consider subscribing to my newsletter. I share special discounts, personal experiences, tips and links to the stuff and resources I personally rely on. If you are interested check out the link in the description. Next up, as the main browser, I still rely on Safari. Its continued simplicity and seamless integration into the Apple ecosystem continue to make it my default browser. Safari is the best kind of browser that does a few things, perhaps sometimes too few, but it always does them well and quickly. To be honest with you, I'm increasingly tempted to switch to Arc browser because lately they have been making some really impressive updates, not only for the web browser, but also for smartphones. For this reason, I'm closely following the updates because I don't rule out considering the switch permanently soon. However, I keep it installed because Every now and then I like to test it and see if it's worth making the switch. Google Chrome can't be missing. I practically never use it but it's essential to have because as mentioned Safari is sometimes too simple in certain aspects. For analyzing website codes and other data that are very useful for specific tasks I prefer to always use Google Chrome. Occasionally when working on websites it's useful to test them on different browsers and for this reason I periodically use all three of these browsers. For productivity I use various tools, starting from my primary activity and daily organizer I have recently switched to Notion Calendar. I used Google Calendar for many years because even after trying many services I never found a real alternative that could replace Google Calendar. Notion Calendar has been out for a few months, but since I use Notion extensively to organize all aspects of my business, I couldn't help but make this transition. I love Notion Calendar because in practice it is identical to Google Calendar with a very clean and simple interface. It doesn't have unnecessary or complicated functions, which in my opinion is fundamental for a planning tool. Moreover, it synchronizes with the calendars and database in your Notion and this is a truly game changer. Practically after years, finally, I have managed to find a single place where I can see all my personal and work commitments. As mentioned earlier, Notion is the platform I use to organize everything related to my work. From content creation to budget management, I have created all the pages I need to keep track of everything. In this case too, I'm against all those templates or systems that, in my opinion, tend to complicate things too much. I believe that planning and organization should take up as little time as possible because most of the time we need to spend it on actual work. For this reason I've tried to create the simplest system possible. Through Notion I replaced many other apps such as Trello and it's much more convenient to have everything directly in one place to use as few services as possible. As an email client I've been using Spark for years, definitely one of the best, both in terms of graphics and functionality. With the unified smart inbox I can automatically select all the truly important emails coming from different addresses. There are also some functions dedicated to teams, so perfect if you work with others on the same project. When it comes to team collaboration, I also use Slack. I would describe Slack as the Discord of business. Very convenient for organizing projects, making calls, and in general working with multiple people on different projects. As a content creator, I can't avoid using multiple software to get work done. Regarding photography, I have chosen to rely entirely on the Adobe Suite. Photoshop and Lightroom are my dedicated software for photo editing, 
Shooting all photos in RAW, I import them into Lightroom to adjust some aspects and create a professional and consistent look. A few weeks ago I also created a tutorial explaining my full photography process. For more profound edits or graphic work, I turn to Photoshop. If you are on a budget, I recommend some valid alternatives like Pixelmator Pro or Affinity. They are excellent software, not at the level of the competitor, but with a significantly lower cost. As for video editing, I rely on Final Cut as my primary program. I am trying to transition to DaVinci Resolve because it is the best software for video color grading, but Currently, for simpler video editing, I'm much faster on Final Cut. I find it excellent for both the actual editing and the management of files and libraries. Finally, to record my Mac screen, as I did in this video, I used Screen Studio. It's rare for me to use apps that are both aesthetically and functionally well crafted. The app allows you to professionally and dynamically record your Mac screen. The software automatically creates smooth animations that add a nice touch. One detail that I love is the slight blur in the movements of the animations, which truly enhances the experience. By the way, this technique is the same one Apple uses in iOS animations, making the overall experience much more enjoyable. So, we uncovered the essence of my MacBook setup from desktop tweaks to crucial apps, Notion rules my organization, Adobe owns my photo edits, and Final Cut leads video editing. Don't forget to subscribe for more, and as always, wishing you the best. See you soon.